what we define as inclusive institutions is an ideal type. Is, some, is an ideal that no country ever has achieved. When we give examples of inclusive institutions, those are never perfect. That has to be borne in mind. But really, you should think of inclusive institutions in three layers. The first is economic, and that's very simple. We can talk about the details, but the big picture is clear. We define inclusive institutions as those that create opportunities and incentives for the people, not just for a few scions of the richest families, monarchs or dukes, not just for the cousins of the dictator or the military junta, but for the broad population. Opportunities, you know, that's what we miss most of history. If you go back to South Africa under apartheid, that's an extreme case of no opportunities for 85% of the population. But if you go to US South, well after slavery had disappeared in the 1940s, 1950s, there are no opportunities for black Americans and there are not even that many opportunities for white low-income Americans. So those opportunities have to be there. But then also you need the incentives that people actually grab those opportunities. So if you provide everybody good schooling, but then you don't give them any incentives because they can't succeed in business, they can't succeed in professions, they cannot succeed as workers, that's not gonna work either. So, so those incentives and opportunities, they need to be at the heart of the economic system. And then we go through what are the things that would actually uh, be best for generating such things. The market economy is key, not an unfettered market without any regulation, but what we call an inclusive market, a market built on public services, public education, regulation of monopoly so that there isn't a power imbalance. Uh, but, but those sorts of market institutions are still key because the alternative to markets is central planning, and that's not going to create opportunities or incentives in any appreciable form. Then you need that uh, inclusive economic institutions to be embedded in inclusive political institutions. One needs, to make sure that they're One needs to be there in order to be the basis of the other, whether that they are in positive synergy. And inclusive political institutions really are about the political analog of the same economic principle. The inclusive institutions fail when opportunities are monopolized, when money is monopolized by some groups. And political inclusivity fails when political power is monopolized by some groups. So, so that's why it's critical to have some sort of democratic institutions. It's critical to have some sort of checks and balances or constitutional rules so that whoever gets elected doesn't misbehave. That's why it's critical to have some state capacity that the state is capable of regulating, uh, enforcing law and order, and all of these things. But the third layer is really at the root of this, and that's really, uh, we talked on this a little bit in Why Nations Fail, but it's the topic of our more recent book, The Narrow Corridor, that James and I wrote uh, last year. And you really need political mobilization of the masses, that people need to be engaged in politics. They need to be part of the political machinery. They don't need to, they, they shouldn't just let politicians or elites or the learned ones to rule the country. So that sort of political engagement of the people is an important safeguard of these inclusive political institutions.